Hello, welcome to Pretty Plantings for Pollinators. My name is Betsy and I'm so glad you joined me today. Today we're going to learn about three things. One, some amazing animals that we call pollinators that help plants to grow. Two, some plants that are beautiful and easy to grow and will bring pollinators to your home. And three, how to actually plant and care for these plants so that you can enjoy the pollinators all summer long. Before we get started, I'd like to share with you a couple things about me. One is that this is my pet mouse. No, I'm just kidding. This is actually the microphone, but I thought some of you might be curious. What I really wanted to tell you is that I love plants and I've been gardening since I was a little kid. I used to love helping my dad grow strawberries in our family garden. And in the summertime, I would go over to my neighbor's house across the street to see all her pretty flowers and watch the butterflies. My family also went camping in our state parks and I just loved walking on trails through all the pretty native grasses and wild flowers. Over the years, I've created lots of different types of gardens, some with vegetables and many with native plants. And I'm happy to be here today to share with you a little of what I've learned. I work now for TRWD, which stands for the Tarrant Regional Water District. TRWD provides water to more than 70 cities in and around Tarrant County. Cities like Fort Worth, Arlington, Mansfield, and many more. We own four big lakes, Bridgeport, Eagle Mountain, Cedar Creek, and Richland Chambers. We move raw or untreated water from these lakes through large pipelines to the cities where people need it. We also store water in Lake Arlington, Benbrook Lake, and Lake Worth. Our customer cities and the Trinity River Authority clean this water so it's safe for drinking and bathing. And then the cities pump this water to your homes, schools, and businesses. For most of you who live in Tarrant County, this is how you get your drinking water. So why do you think that someone from TRWD, your raw water supplier, would be here to teach you how to grow plants for pollinators? Can you guess? Hmm, think about it. If you think it has something to do with the fact that plants need water to live, you're on the right track. Just like you and me and all living creatures, plants need water to survive. And here in this part of Texas, it's hot and dry for much of the year. And so the plants that live in our prairies and woodlands have figured out how to survive with very little water. These plants have been living in Texas for hundreds and even thousands of years. And during this time, they have made some good friendships with the animals we call pollinators. Native plants provide the food and the shelter that the pollinators need. Pollinators spread pollen that the plants need to produce seeds to grow new baby plants. Native plants and pollinators really need each other. They are nature's BFFs. So when you plant pollinator friendly native Texas plants that need very little water to grow, you're not only making your home more beautiful and helping wildlife, but you're using water wisely. And since more folks are always moving to this area and they need water too, using water wisely is really important and helps make sure that there's enough water for everyone. All right, so let's talk some more about pollinators. Pollinators are really superheroes. Dun, dun, dun. They save the day every day by making it possible for us to eat fruits, nuts, vegetables, and so much more. How do they do this? Pollinators carry pollen from one part of a flower to another. And by doing this, they share the instruction manuals, or DNA, that plants need to produce seeds and fruits. What kind of plants need pollinators? The plants that grow apples, strawberries, blueberries, watermelon, pears, blackberries, cherries, almonds, cucumbers, pumpkins. I could go on and on. If you like any of these foods, thank the bees. Without pollinators, we would lose the plants that feed the world. Pollinators also pollinate many of the native plants that live in our woodlands and prairies and provide food and shelter for wildlife and capture and purify rainwater and protect and build healthy soils. In fact, our whole ecosystem depends on these native plants and their pollinator buddies. 
So what kind of animals are pollinators? Pollinators in Texas are butterflies, bees, birds, bats, beetles, flies, wasps, and moths. All right, try to say all of them really fast. Butterflies, bees, birds, bats, beetles, Butterflies, bees, birds, bats, beautiful, what? Butterflies, bees, birds, bats, beautiful. Okay, that's pretty tough, but you guys got the point. There are a lot of pollinators. So what kind of plants do pollinators like best? They like the ones that provide lots of nectar and pollen when they need it and served in their favorite ways. Butterflies especially like flowers that are red, yellow, orange, pink, and purple. They like blossoms that are flat topped or clustered and have short flower tubes. Some examples are lantana, prairie verbena, Greg's or blue mist flower, cone flower, sun drops, and salvias like mealy blue sage. Butterflies drink nectar by unrolling a long tube from their mouths called a proboscis and sticking it inside the flower tube to suck up nectar, just like we would use a straw. Okay, so I have a reusable straw here that I can use to demonstrate. I'm gonna pretend like I'm a butterfly and this is my proboscis. Nailed it. Butterflies are also attracted to plants that provide food for their young caterpillars. These plants are called host plants. You can look up the host plants for particular butterflies. If you want to attract monarch and queen butterflies, plant milkweed like butterfly weed, green milkweed, or antelope horns. You can attract gulf fritillaries and variegated fritillaries by planting passion vine. You can plant the herb fennel to attract eastern black swallowtails. Bees are attracted to flowers that have bright colors too, especially white, yellow, and blue. Just like many butterflies, they like flowers that have shallow tubes and a platform to land. They also like sticky, scented pollen. Many plants that attract butterflies will also attract bees, including mealy blue sage, blue bonnets, sexmania, black-eyed susan, and fall aster, to name a few. Hummingbirds love flowers that have trumpet-shaped tubes that are facing sideways or downwards. They also eat small insects that are attracted to large flat flowers. Good plants to attract hummingbirds include coral honeysuckle, Turk's cap, Texas lantana, and flame acanthus. So now let's talk about different ways to grow and care for these plants. First, choose your spot. Choose someplace sunny. Flowering plants will grow best with full or part sun. Choose a place that will be easy for you to water. Choose a place that you can easily see from a window or someplace you walk by frequently outside. If possible, choose a place where there is shelter nearby for pollinators to rest and hide from predators. Butterflies, bees, and hummingbirds will be more attracted to flowers that have shady trees and bushes nearby. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is prepare your spot. If you have a patio and you'd like to grow your plant in a pot, then find a pretty large pot. Large pots will allow more room for the plant's roots to grow. Larger pots will also take longer to dry out, so you won't have to water them as often. And when you're looking for potting soil to put inside your pot, try to find a soil mix that does not contain peat moss. Peat moss dries out really quickly in our Texas heat and can be hard to re-wet. If you're growing your plant or plants in the ground, prepare the soil. Remove any grass or plants growing there. Add three inches of good quality compost and mix it in. If you have heavy clay, add some expanded shale to improve drainage. The next step is to choose your plants. You want to consider how big your plant is going to grow and make sure you choose the right size plant for whatever pot or container you have or garden bed. You also want to think about if you want to buy plants from a nursery 
or if you want to start them from seed, or maybe you have a friend who has a garden and you want to ask if they have any baby plants they can share. If you want to start your plants from seed, find a plant that is easy to start from seed and can be planted this spring. Two good examples are Black Eyed Susan and Bee Balm. Some of you may have received a bookmark that says Learn and Grow, SaveTarrantWater.com. At the top of this bookmark is a little raindrop that has seeds in it. Take the raindrop off the bookmark and there's instructions underneath on how to grow Black Eyed Susan wildflowers. So you're going to take the raindrop, you're going to soak it in a little cup of water for a couple hours, and you're going to fill a small pot with potting soil, lay your seed paper on the top just like that, and then sprinkle a little bit of potting soil on top. You want to keep it moist and in a warm area, but not in direct sunlight. It has to stay moist in order for the seeds to germinate. So like, I think putting it on a windowsill would be a good idea. So water it um, at least once a day and check on it for a week or so and your little Black Eyed Susan seeds will start to grow. Many wildflower seeds are very tiny, so be sure to place them on the top of the soil and lightly press them in. Don't bury them deep in the soil or they won't grow. After planting, the next step is to water and care for your plants. You want to check on your plants frequently, and when the soil dries out around the top, give them a good long drink. You want to make sure that you're, that you're watering all the soil around the roots of your plant, and that will encourage your plant to grow roots deep into the pot or the ground where it's cool and moist, and that will help your plant survive. When you're caring for your plant, if you see tiny insects on the stem or leaves called aphids, wash them off with water or a soapy water spray. Aphids often feed on milkweed in the later part of the summer, and this is normal. Don't use chemicals to kill the aphids because it could harm the pollinators too. The fifth step is to provide water for your pollinators. If you happen to have a bird bath, clean it out and fill it up with fresh water every day. If you don't, you can use any sort of shallow dish, like this kind, this is like one that would go underneath a potted plant, and fill it with, place a little bit of gravel or rocks at the bottom and fill it with clean, fresh water every day for your pollinators. And the last step, share your story. I would love to hear about the plants that you planted and learn what pollinators came to visit. Send me an email at conservation at trwd.com or ask your parents if they can help you post some photos of your pollinator plants on Facebook or Twitter and tag us at TRWD. Thanks so much for joining me today. I wish you the very best in planting your pretty plants for these amazing pollinators and I hope to hear from you soon.